Greetings, ladies and gentle players. It is a Friday, this wonderful September 2020. That makes it a wonderful day for basics. I am over here, as you can see, on wonderful OGS, but I'm not actually on my normal account. You might be wondering, what's up with that? Or this is the account you use to uh, play games against Dons or DDKs. What are we going to do today? Glad you asked. I received a suggestion that maybe instead of always playing DDQs, I review some of their games and highlight the principals that I am trying to convey to you fine folks. And I decided that's actually a pretty reasonable idea. And wouldn't you know it, there's a bunch of people playing right now at the DDK level, which is actually uh, no Stark. That's actually really good to see. That many uh, DDKs currently playing games right now? That's that's fantastic. That's exactly what you want to see. More new players uh, getting into the game. That way, maybe, you know, one day in the near future, maybe this list will be just as large as the DDK list. You never know, right? You never know. But yeah, I'm going to be reviewing some DDK games today. Not to worry, though. If I have done everything I think I'm going to do, the names will be hidden to protect the innocent. All right, so we are starting off here looking at a game between two 12 Qs on OGS. And after looking at uh, way too many DDK games, I actually kind of gently pulled, just kind of like pulled a theme out of these games that I want to talk about. And that theme is specialty moves, identifying specialty moves, being weary of playing specialty moves, and showing why, until you have a nice firm foundation in your go, why these sorts of specialty moves can kind of sort of, well, bring about lots of sadness. So let us look at this game, 12Q versus 12Q. We have, as you can see here, um, all right, Black's playing off star point, not traditional 4-4, four, 3-4. Four, four. We've got a lovely little 3-5 uh, move over here. And that's interesting. It's interesting because, and I don't want to use the OGS tool, when I've got a superior pen, thank you very much. Pen, let's go. See, this thing over here is not usually interested in influence. So this thing says, I want the area in here. And sure enough, the 4-4 stone can do that as well because it says it wants influence. But the thing is, if we get our heart's desire and we only get this area over here, we start actually running into a problem because ideally we'll probably be able to expect fourth line territory from this, which, okay, sure. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we get our wish, that's 30 points for black developing that third line territory. However, if your opponent has two corners, that's 10 and 10, and then Comey, so that's probably going to be six. So now we're at 26. They've already tied you with what you have. If you, have, if you give up the corner in order to get that, you're going to fall behind. It's one of the reasons why we usually say developing the area between uh, two corners is usually not as large as you think it is. This is one of the reasons for that. So right away, by playing this move that is focusing or seeming to focus on this area, Black has to be very, very cautious because this little specialty move could be his downfall if he adheres to it too tightly. Let's continue. Uh -huh. Okay. Now we have another specialty move. Another 3-5. There's still some Aji in the corner. But, all right, we're going for a weird enclosure. It's kind of a derp enclosure. Like, we could have played this for a nice solid move. Instead, he's playing this. Now, again, very, very, very uh, special specialized. Question is, does it do a lot more than this? That's, that's the question, right? Does it, does it, does it? And the answer to that is not really, because you can see in here... We get 
this stretch of territory like so. We can color in this happy little bit. We're going to get this territory. All right, great. It's all nice and colored in. So if we go over here, well, it looks like I can add like this extra. So we're adding ambiguity to our corner for just this, this little extra here. That doesn't really seem worth it unless it has a lot, lot, lot better meaning behind it than that. So again, you can kind of you can kind of see where the specialty is coming in. And again, this is not particularly uh, solid yet. This is not a solid enclosure because your opponent can easily be like, "Hey, do you mind if I like play here and literally go through you?" And you'll be like, "No," and then they'll just get some outside. Kind of, kind of not good, right? Let's see, what did white do? White and close, which I think is a little bit passive. I probably would have played on the right hand side or something, but you know, it's an enclosure. Okay, now that's three moves. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Do we have to worry now? Well, if we go back to here, isn't this kind of similar to if you'd played here? Like the only difference is literally that, that point right there, right? So, it's not very scary, is it? It looks intimidating, like, oh my god, he's getting one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's 16 points of territory. Who cares? Not nothing really to worry about here. So this is this is all for the influence. And I guess since we're on this subject, we should probably mention also there are ways, for example, to further reduce the corner and use its uncertainty to live on the outside. So I have to be very, very careful with these specialty moves. Let's see how uh, black handles it. Encloses, white approaches, I agree. Going in for a lot of territory. This is kind of what I was referring to earlier when I said he has to be careful about just developing the area between the two corners. Like he spent a lot of time now to develop this area. But if he's actually going to sit here and develop it while his opponent gets the wonderful opportunity to develop his own area, it still seems pretty fine. Worse yet, from this position, we could easily imagine our opponent following up here to grow. So does that mean you're going to keep playing over here? Because, I mean, now we, we know fairly well that we're over-concentrated. You know? We know, we know we're over-concentrated. White's develop, trying to develop the left, trying to develop the bottom. Black's after just the right. Ah, it's too over-concentrated, too over-concentrated. So I would kind of do corner, side, center, not uh, corner, 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 and then see where you go from there, you know? This should have been... Oh, that's kind of weird. Okay, whatever. I would have played that one high, but who cares? Trying to drop the right-hand side. Yeah, you can see black is just now... And he changed his mind. This is the problem. He had it in his mind. He's playing this for influence. A very specialized opening for a very specialized purpose, but he's now not liking playing on the right-hand side anymore. So he's breaking very, very basic principles, and now he's letting his opponent, Hane, at the head of two stones, which ends the game. If white gets this, game's over. Too much influence, too much strength is going to white. This corner is not worth all the investment here. And the extra payoff from this is being limited by the wall that White's developing. So this, not doing very good, right? We don't like. We don't like this at all. Definitely not something we want to see in our games. We poke a little bit further ahead. Just a little bit further. Just a little bit further. More specialized combat. He got kicked, and rather than saying, yeah, I want the kick, I want to develop here, 
and I want to develop here. He's changing directions instantly. And now all white has to do this game is just keep obeying proverbs, things like high knight had a two and three stones, things like keep your opponent separated, get sensei to follow up. He should be absolutely fine never having to actually make a really big decision in this game. It's all kind of following up what black isn't doing. Black isn't strengthening his stones, so preventing us from adhering to the uh, simple proverbs. Black isn't getting solid bases, preventing us from following up and really harassing his position. Black isn't maintaining a nice balanced uh, board position, meaning there's a lot of really big points on the board while he's off doing this stuff and forgetting about this stuff. So a few more, and I should probably be able to call it here. Okay, yeah. Follows up. I'd rather high head head of the three, but it's whatever. Okay. Okay, yep, yeah, sure. This I understand. It's really hard to figure out right now because black has so much going wrong with him. Like, do I do I prioritize this one? Do I go back over here and then, you know, pincer here? Because, you know, no base, no base. Proverbs. You can kind of see how simple, simple play here is just going to... Oh, it's just going to... It's just going to pay for itself. Especially against play like this. Ooh, it's going to pay for itself over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, I don't like this. Now we're giving fifth line territory away. That's, that's a bit of a mistake. Can definitely Hane again. Your opponent can do, you know, whatever, whatever. But then what happens there? He's pretty close to dying and uh yeah this isn't looking good not looking good for um for our hero in the corner huh this is this is this is a uh, one game for white in my opinion trying to do something trying to do something again going out to the corner trying to be aggressive not getting a base not getting a base that should be high danger of playing low is the wall that might have influence might be able to use the influence to keep you low and thus you know maybe i don't know just really quick and crude uh settle like in some way getting shaped by being able to keep you low you don't get the val full value of your attack same thing here yep sure turn it's the proverb all over again though because he can go here here into here as well and you get the idea. You get the idea. Not going corner, side, center. Not being wary of Proverbs, letting your opponent high ahead of two and three stones. Not getting yourself a solid base. And unfortunately, uh, this happy little DDQ is going to be taken completely out of the game. Let's move on to another one. All right, here we go with another game. This one is a uh, 12Q versus a 9Q this time. <laughs> Cute little snapback over here. Ooh, that hurt. How'd that happen? Oh, he, he, he missed it. He pushed it, he blocked, and then, yeah, he just missed. That's unfortunate. But that aside, <clears throat> that aside, we do have, once again, that thread of one player playing special moves and my voice going crazy. <clears throat> All right. Right, we've got that thread of special moves still. And I have no idea what sounds I'm making. All right, third time's the charm. Special moves. All right, let's go. So, bounced opening so far. Got the approach. Nothing wrong with it. Backing off. Nothing wrong with it. D2 is a little bit slow. We don't really play that very often nowadays. I still do it in my basics just because... Mm, Back enough high, once upon a time we actually didn't do that, and we kept it nice and tight, because there's Aji here still, but uh, it's kind of gone away, this is, this is acceptable, this has been accepted for, I don't know, years now. So, okay, okay, little bit of a special move, but I'll grant it, usually when you back off, you want to just go ahead and back off, and not make this exchange first, that way you have like options to do this still, you have options to flat out do this still. Lot of stuff, lot of stuff, lot of stuff. 
and it makes your stone closer to your 4-4, so they work together a little bit better. But, you know, meh, it's fine. Okay, got <laughs> mirror match. All right, he's going for a framework. Not bad. Ooh, and there you have it, ladies and gents. We have what we can only identify as a specialty move. But let's back up a little bit to understand how we got here. Black decided he was going to build. This is acting as an extension from an enclosure. Ideally, to not be in this position further on down the road, we would go ahead and play over here, thus preventing our lovely opponent from getting an enclosure to work with his extension. Thus, all of his stones working absolutely fantastically. White, on the other hand, decided to go with the exact same plan that Black is going with. But here's the problem with going second in the exact same plan. Your opponent is going that way first, which put pressure on white to try to get ahead. Try to get ahead. He doesn't want his opponent taking Tengen and trying to make like um, this kind of... This kind of like a huge area here in the middle, right? With Mr. Boxy. That would then radiate influence. Mr. Boxy would radiate influence. You don't want you don't want that to happen, you know? So he decided that he's gonna take Tengen. Go is an amazing game. You can kind of like hear your opponent's thoughts without ever saying a word to them. It's fantastic, it's fantastic. Black to a credit, played away. Now here's the thing. Especially at DDK level, and SDK level, and most at Don level too, Tengen, for the most part, can be treated like it doesn't even exist. Because getting all of your stones to work with that middle point is kind of tough. It really is. So, for us amateurs, getting our middle stone to be effective is almost nigh on impossible. Unless we have very specific ideas that we're very specifically going to implement. So most of the time, when I see Tengen, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to play like it's not even there. And most of the time, it was completely fine. So the question is, how is he going to make this work? White pincered. Okay, 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 pincering. Black jumped out. Also, again, not good. He's jumping out because he's afraid of Tengen. He's jumping out because... Nope. Trash can't... Uh, uh, uh. Trash can that move. There we go. He's jumping out because he's looking at this and he's rejecting it. Problem is, Tengen is not the proper placement for the next follow-up of this formation. You would want it somewhere over in here, right? That way you're drawing your happy little boxes in this little area, right? A little of an anvil, I guess. You can draw a little an anvil up in uh, this little area. So this is out of position, which means if you were to play as black right now, you could play something as simple as, well, what if I played uh, here? You're not surrounded after that, right? And now the influence is cutting off the Tengen stone? Right, right, right? See how the tables have turned against the fair Tengen stone? See how hard it is to actually work with that stupid thing? Ugh, gotta be very careful. I have to know exactly what you're doing. That's why this is a specialty move. And also why Black should not have eyed it and been like, you know what, I'm afraid of that move. I'm going to jump out so he's not going to get anything there. No, you get Sente. So you can play whatever. I don't care if it's here. Here, um, I don't know, uh, wherever, you know, you're going to be able to reduce, you're going to be fine. It's A-O-K. Instead, unfortunately, Black identified the specialty move, got scared, jumped out instead of just going into the corner. And now we see someone who's, oops, that's wrong. 
who is literally just running away. But the influence is going to be really isn't really going to matter. H how are you going to use the influence here? This way? No. This way? I mean, I guess you can this way, but giving up the corner or the the top rather, nice and solid to white. Giving up left, nice and solid. Giving up sente, so he can go and play. You know, whatever he wants to do here. Like, is this really the variation? Is this really the sequence you were looking for? Probably not, man. No, no matter how you slice it, it looks like uh, kind of taking a little bit of a punch here. Bit of a punch right to the face. When, as we saw, no reason to. It's on white to prove this move is valuable. Not on black to. You know, this isn't the, nat the next natural move in the sequence of moves that White's played so far. So it's on white to figure it out. Black can just chill, play nice, solid, and basic, and he'll be giving more of a trouble to his opponent than, you know, if he tries to respond with specialty play to combat specialty play. It's just how that is. Make sense? Hope so. Whoa. What? Yeah. And then we get into weird fighting that I don't really want to review right now and is most definitely not the scope of this video. Spoiler! All of Black's moves can die right now! So let's go and look at another game with some specialty moves. Alright, here is the next game. It is between a 12Q and 11Q. Boy, does this look like a mess. Got captured stones over here, captured stones over here, captured stones up in here and over there. It's, it's just... Wait, actually... Yeah, it's, it's just... Actually, no, that, that's dead. Oof. There's a lot of dead stones here. Okay, we've got four fours, four fours, San Rinsei. Ooh. Not San Rinsei. Odd. Like the game we just looked at, though, it's choosing to make a framework off someone who's trying to already make a framework. So, interesting decision there, but dangerous to do since they're building before you. White's going to have to break it before before black does. Because if we just look at something like this, for example, we'll notice that one person is going to be uh, too slow in the framework versus framework war, obviously, because someone began building the framework first. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Cool. So, all right, we have here, we have an Pincer, uh, wrong, should go into here. This uh, small knight is just wrong. I'm guessing that white will block this way. And then you have a nice easy cap here since he's building off a low stone. Very nice, very simple, very basic. I like it. This is not basic. We have a group that can't live locally. Now we're jumping out, okay. But he's, you know, living and he's trying to get a base. Could go two space. It's a little bit of a wussy pants move. Don't like it so much. But whatever, it's fine. Okay. Coming out. Looking after his group. Tip of the hat to the guy looking after his group. Not being like, oh, I think that this is far and I'm going to play away, man. And then you have like all the influence come down on these little two guys. It's like, oh, I'm stupid. Why'd I do that? So cool, cool, cool. A little bit of attack, I like. And then here is where you lose me. Here is where you lose me. This I regard as a specialty move. And here is why. This is going to give a bunch of influence to black if played properly. Okay, that's an issue. There are a bunch of low stones on the right that could be kept low to further gain that influence. That could be a greater issue. There is already a stone at K4 to use the wall that you're giving black. 
while your stones are also low elsewhere on the board, tying everything together. It's a lot of issues. Now, if you are the bleep bloopomatic 5000 and you you just don't think anyone can bleep as hard as your bloops, then maybe maybe this is going to be okay for you. If you're a DDK, an SDK, even a Don player a lot of the times, this is going to get you killed. It's going to get you killed because you don't have the skill set to do the huge amounts of reduction you're going to need to do in order to handle that move. You're just not going to be able to. Let's see how it happens. Luck is smiling upon white this game for black block the wrong direction. He blocked in the way that apparently, apparently, his stones are not. He should be blocking this way. And then even taking an old school variation is fine here. I to the MHOs, because when you look at it, numbers don't lie, kid. We got the wall. We've got expansions. We're one move away from having another wall coming up, which means white's gonna have to reduce all of this. Now you might be saying, that is fine. If I was playing as white, I would be able to do such things. I like the cut of this man's jib. Okay, but here's the thing. While you're doing that, you know what you're not doing? You're not getting any new territory. Which means things like this, attacking the top, will be at, white's, at black's discretion because white has no time to defend it. Approaching to further enlarge, it's going to be a black discretion because white has no time to deal with it. See the problem here? You see the problem here? He would have been so much better off if he had just been like, you know what? Okay, I, I did that. Cool. Now I'm going to like play here and I don't know, maybe he does something over in this one or something. Now I've got potential here, i got potential here, my opponent's potential is here. This is so much more manageable. Opponent's got one source of territory. White's flashing up to two. And a stable group. Can be kept low still, admittedly. But there's profit to be had. So I would do specialty move. Okay. Oh, and then plays the Hane, which is not recommended. That makes this really, really strong. Now, as long as we're respectful of the influence, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. He slams his head into the influence at point blank range, which means he's he's done for. Doing moves like this is going to get him killed. He's fighting point and point against his opponent's uh, thickness. His opponent can subsequently ignore the crap out of him. Keep taking big points, because what's he going to do this? Who cares? Wake me when this is a problem. It'll be a while, by the way, because it really ain't. This group is going to be struggling not to drop dead the entire rest of the game. And as a result, I mean, Black's just going to keep picking up more and more points of territory as this goes on. Looking after that stone, it's going to be the end, man. Specialty move, waiting to give his opponent influence. He did not know how to deal with the influence he gave his opponent. And sure enough, I think that's the thread that caused him to lose the game. I do believe it is. Because I remember looking how there's a lot of middle stuff that went wrong this game. So I do believe this stuff just spirals out of control, doesn't it? Yeah, you see? You see? He attacked for uh, more profit on the right. Black said, okay, defend yourself. 
White's like, but I don't want to lose these stones either. So Black's like, then you've lost the game. Try to dance around, take away all the influence, like you see the AI do. Those are heavily, heavily, heavily specialized lines of play that even pros struggle with. If you want to play that way, and you can, you know, whatever makes you happy, you need firm basics. You need a firm foundation first and foremost if you want to play that way to understand strength when you see it, what shapes you need to make when you're inevitably counterattacked, when to do the reduction, so you need to have a pretty good sense of, you know, what's big and what's small over the course of the game. Too small to reduce this now, we'll play something bigger now. That's getting bigger, let's get Sente and go back and deal with that. You know, kind of dancing back and forth between uh, those lines of play. This kind of stuff, throwing your head against the wall, ain't gonna work. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do you good. Because this is, this is game over. And unfortunately, the game over now is because he went into the 3-3, gave the opponent influence, and then just crumbled. And Black didn't have to respond to that. Black's active decision this game, keep in mind, make a base on the top side, which is too small. Shouldn't have done it. Bad play. Blocked in the wrong direction. Again, bad play. But then White followed up and drove himself right into the ground by smashing his face directly against that, bla that, bl bl that bad play, turning it into good play. So this is a story of Black not defeating White. This is a story of White defeating himself. He lost this game all on his own. Didn't really, uh... Black didn't really have much say in the matter. He just knew, keep him separated. Sweet. Surround him. Excellent. This fool's dead. Get a base. Terrific. Fix my shape. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I love it. Congratulations to Black. You gotta be wary of these specialty moves. In all three games I've gone over today, you gotta be careful with specialty moves. And this is why. So I hope this is one of the reasons why if you're an SDK, you, or an SD, or, well, an SDK or a DDK, you know, whatever. This is why you keep working on your fundamentals. This is why you keep yourself a nice, strong foundation. They can't uh, get pushed over easily. That can prop you up on whichever style of play, you know, you want to take for yourself. Strong foundation is going to get you there. So, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's DDK Back to Basics. It was recommended I do some reviewing of some games. I wanted to do that. I hope this is what you were looking for. Let me know if you enjoyed this uh, versus my usual playing of the DDKs. If you want to see more of this, never see this ever again. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll be looking for that. And as always, I'll see you next time. Take care, buddy.